I know you're very involved with the issue yes. of protecting journalists. Your parents were journalists, you were journalists, mm -hmm. your late husband trained to be a journalist. The conditions, the working conditions and the danger that journalists are in now yeah. is just as heightened if in some respects, maybe even more in some areas. I think it is more dangerous now. Than um, when your parents were in doing my, it. Yeah, in my, in my parents' era during the Cold War, you know, there were definite rules. Uh, my parents broke those rules and went to prison. Uh, but most journalists didn't. Today, there are no rules, and, and journalists are fair game. And, you know, because, because we're, we're up against uh, non-state actors, so-called, that is to say, terrorists and Who can malicious. take people hostage, and, and you don't yeah, know who to negotiate no, with. Yeah. Yeah, there are no there are no rules, and and wearing a, uh, you know, holding up a big banner saying press is is no longer uh, a guarantee of anything because that just makes you an even more desirable uh, target in 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 places where where uh, Al Qaeda is roosting, for example. And people forget that one of the most dangerous places to be a reporter is just south of here in Mexico. Yes. Yes, I we mean, do a so lot of close. work. We do a lot of work at the Committee to Protect Journalists and in Mexico. My, my, uh, for the last few years, I've been going to Moscow on behalf of Russia's Russian journalists. Incredibly because, dangerous place. Yes, it's much more dangerous now than in the communist era. So, and to what do you attribute that? The the kind of, the lack of centralized government control in some ways. The, that's right. That's right. It's it's the oligarchy. Uh, yeah, the the oligarchs are very dangerous people, and um, and frankly, the state doesn't seem that bothered when journalists get bumped off. And so I've been going every fall and 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 meeting not only with with uh, with journalists who are struggling, but but also with the powers that be to because we represent, you know, the United States is still is still. Um, the, the most powerful bastion. nation in the world and, and a bastion of freedom. But uh, for sure, I wouldn't be doing this if, uh, if I wouldn't have experienced my own parents' um, arrest uh, for the crime of being good reporters. And in those days, there was no committee to protect journalists, so nobody came to look after my sister and me. So is it, what would you like to see done, or is it more yeah. a case-by-case -case basis that the committee advocates on the behalf of journalists? Well, we, we have people on the ground everywhere who, um, who, who, you know, through the miracle of technology, who keep us posted on everything. We're headquartered in, in New York. So then you and start kind of yes. barraging the, the governments with... Yes, to absolutely. Let, to keep that person on the forefront. At yes, the forefront. and also, also the, the, um, the remarkable power of publicity that, you know, once, once um, somebody, somebody is, is in danger, we make sure that, that the people who are, who are threatening them know that we're on the case and that stories will be written about it. And so publicity, yes. Could I ask you about the phenomenon of um, social media and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Facebook, Twitter, yes. whatever? Um, it shouldn't replace journalism. I, I um, you know, I'm a, I'm a great fan of technology and, and uh, you know, love my iPad, love my iPhone. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, to be a journalist means, means willingness to take risks and also not only, not only to go after the story where it's breaking as opposed to, you know, in your pajamas letting the world know what you think of it, um, but, but also an understanding of history you can't be a journalist these days and not have some some understanding of of who, what are the forces at play? Where did the Arab Spring come from? Uh, we, you know, we've 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 got extremely good and brave reporters who are taking great risks on our behalf. Let's not confuse them with somebody who is telling us uh, what kind of coffee they're having in the morning before they even. Uh, get to their office. That the, you know, that's not journalism, but it's social media, and it and it enables people to to uh, reach reach across borders, and and so that's good. And and obviously, it worked in on behalf of the uh, the, the people who are claiming their freedom and their rights in in the Middle East. Sure, in Iran, other news might not have gotten out, or word might yes. not have gotten out or, without or people Cairo, twittering or, or Cairo. Mm -hmm. So, but it but it has the opposite effect too. For example, the rioting in in uh, in London um, couldn't have couldn't have um, spread as quickly without uh, people tweeting each other and and, and saying come on out. Yes, like that. the flash mobs. So so you know it it has its uh, its danger as as well. But let's not confuse social media with uh, with real reporting 
and real journalism. And in your human rights arena, where are you focused right now? What concerns you when you look out at, at that landscape? I mean, there's so many things, yeah. but do you have a particular focus uh, from Human Rights Watch? Well, um, you know, women <laughs> are, are my focus. I, I, I think that women are, are still uh, treated in the most um, demeaning, degrading way by, by much of the world, and often under the guise of religion, they are um, kept from, from uh, living full lives. Marriage can be well, one marriage of the most can be, dangerous things in some countries. Yes, but but beyond that, you know, there are if if I mean one of the reasons why 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 Richard was uh, really gave of his last uh, breath to in 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 Afghanistan was because the Taliban represents such a danger for women. And when you say that, you mean as he was being wheeled into surgery, he talked about the the, the I was, need to yes. solve the if Afghanistan. Yeah. I I I really meant that um, that. He undertook what was, uh, I think, the toughest uh, assignment for President Obama, which was Afghanistan and Pakistan. And and he he wasn't the sort of person who ever held back. Once once he was uh, given a an assignment like that, he spent himself entirely. And um, and and so he did in in Afghanistan and Pakistan. And you're saying in part because of the human rights issues involved and because and, and because uh, we we had gone to Afghanistan together and we met with with a lot of women I was at the time uh, head of the International Women's Health Coalition so I I had a big interest in in that subject and and uh, I wore a burqa in in Kabul just to see what that felt like and believe me you do not feel like a full human being uh, under under that thing it's very demeaning um, you know we have to respect other cultures. cultures, yeah, but not all traditions are good traditions. Let's let's be clear about that. Or perhaps the the larger issue being that somebody should have a choice. Well, exactly. What, what tradition they want yes. to? Yes, it shouldn't. To it shouldn't follow. be dangerous not to um, not to do as as uh, you know these these are these are men who are imposing these. So I, I think that that is is the one that's closest to my heart. But there's a there's a menu of, of, of other choices that um, that we deal with at, at Human Rights Watch and <clears throat> and also um, International Rescue Committee that I work work for as well. And what's next for you? Are you going to continue writing books? Yes, I've got I've got uh, a book in 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 the works already. Uh, it'll be my eighth, and uh, and I'm I'm partly involved with. Um, with the, the the film of Enemies of the People, I uh, spent time sure. with the people who are working on that because I want to make sure that this is a really credible good. I mean, this is my story, and it will yeah. be very peculiar to see Somebody's myself. Somebody's going to play picture. you yes. too, right? Yes. So you want to have some yes. input into that, and the book will be just the generic. Or can you talk the book, about the subject? The book is. <laughs> um, it's it's going to be something unlike anything I've ever done. It's called Paris, a love story, and it's really the story of my lifelong uh, relationship to Paris, where I'm living um, part time now. It's Fabian. <laughs> <Wait. laughs> and 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 of course, um, Richard will be a big part of it. It's, it's a memoir, um, and and that's where we got to know each other, and and so I'll weave that in. So it should be a very uplifting um, thing to write about. I mean, writing about Paris, what could be better than that? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll look forward to that. And thank, thank you, you very much for talking with me. My pleasure. Thanks for having me.